The Senate Judiciary Committee is holding a hearing on Supreme Court ethics today. All nine justices released a joint statement reaffirming their voluntary adherence to a general code of conduct, but rebutting proposals for independent oversight and mandatory compliance with ethics rules. The court has come under mounting pressure to address its handling of potential conflicts of interest after a wave of reports alleging ethical lapses by Justices Clarence Thomas and Neil Gorsuch. Senior Washington reporter Devin Dwyer joins me now for more on this. Uh, Devin, Chief Justice John Roberts declined an invitation to attend this hearing. How much power does Congress actually have here? Well, that's a great question, Diane, and it's up for debate today with a panel of academic experts, including former Attorney General Michael Mukasey uh, and some other former retired judges. They're talking about what power Congress has to impose a, an enforceable code of ethics on the Supreme Court. The justices, all nine of them, uh, are not bound by any specific rules by law. They're not uh, overseen by any independent body. They say and they pledge in the statement you mentioned last week uh, that they are following guidelines that apply to judges. They consult uh, with the law. They consult with each other. But at this point, it's the only branch of government that does not have an enforceable ethics code. And so Democrats in holding this hearing today are trying to put a spotlight on that and talk about some proposed legislation that could uh, force the justices to have greater disclosure requirements, greater reporting requirements, and set up some sort of mechanism to enforce those new rules uh, and discipline justices if necessary. Now, the ranking Republican member of this committee, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, says that this is an effort by Democrats to undermine the court. Listen to what he had to say. This is an unseemly effort by the Democratic left to destroy the legitimacy of the Roberts court. It's put people at risk. It's put their personal safety at risk. And if you want to talk about making the court a better institution, I'll be glad to work with in that regard. If you want to talk about destroying the court, count me out. So, Devin, why hold this hearing now? Is it because the court leans more conservative? Well, that's what Republicans are saying. And Lindsey Graham's argument there is that he's all for greater transparency, encouraging the Supreme Court uh, to be more uh, responsive to the public and, of course, public erosion of trust in the Supreme Court. But Republicans uh, are united in their response to this hearing, Diane. They say this is all about politics. It's sour grapes from Democrats. They're not happy with decisions coming from this conservative Supreme Court. Elections uh, have consequences, and, and that is the line from Republicans today that this is the court that we have. Uh, and there's also been a lot of talk about all of these reports we've been seeing of late. Republicans are saying that those are part of a coordinated attack on the court by the left and that there's no actual meat there, that a lot of this is smoke, the appearance of impropriety, but no actual alleged conflict, no actual impact in any specific case. Uh, and so that's the counter argument to the fact this is being heard today. Republicans for transparency, but not an enforceable ethics code. Democrats say one is really needed, Diane. Now, could this scrutiny affect how the justices approach their arguments in cases, Devin? You know, I've spoken with many of the justices behind the scenes, Diane, and I got to tell you, including the liberal justices, they believe they are uh, doing their best to be ethical, to be responsive to the public, following these rules. I don't think that this hearing, the politics around this are going to influence any specific cases that are currently pending, and there are big ones uh, it, it coming down the pike. Uh, but this political pressure, no doubt, uh, is weighing on the minds of the justices, and that statement they put out last week, signed by all nine, including the liberals, pushing back on some of this attempted oversight is really extraordinary. Uh, and this is a group of nine uh, who see themselves as an independent, apolitical branch of our government, and they don't want Congress meddling in that, Diane. All right. Senior Washington reporter Devin Dwyer, thanks for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.